Hey, what's up? Chris from Schoen Roofing. Today we are going to install four more flanges uh, for a friend of ours that is renewing a house and two are going to be for the new high efficiency furnace and two for a high efficiency hot water tank. Um, both are located in the attic, so best source was to go through the roof um, with these pipes. All right, let's get to her. So it's about a 712 pitch. So what we did was brought the uh, pitch hoppers up Two of them are directly below where we have to do our work. And then the other two we're gonna hold materials and tools. And these things are a lifesaver, like we always say. Um, gonna make this job way easier. No need for jacks and planks. And you can do this just standing on it, but as soon as you drop something, you know, it's gonna go rolling down. So one thing I wanted to point out is that these, uh, these are the flanges that we're gonna be using. They're two inch um, Oatly, no cock. Yeah, no cock. Sure, buddy. I just want to show the difference of our standard two inch flange. So you can see the flange size difference. The width is two thirds. Maybe two thirds the same as a standard two inch plastic. Now the reason we use these is they're recommended by the manufacturer and, and the HVAC, but when this roof ever gets redone, um, the pipes coming up are gonna have elbows or lids on them. So you're not gonna be able to replace these. It's kind of like a hydro stack uh, where you have to reuse the flange because it's got hydro going to it. Um, unless you wanna get into cutting the, uh, the PVC and then gluing a new top or a new lid on. But that's the reason we got these. All right, here we go. Gonna install this flange and a uh, high efficiency PVC piping is coming through two inch. Got our locate screwed from underneath, got our hole popped. So first thing you do is take your flange and set it on that center hole. And then you're gonna look at your shingles. So this row and this row are gonna go on top of the flange and the flange is gonna sit on top of this row. That's gonna be your proper water shedding install. Um, if you think about it very uh, basic, if you just had this row on top, you're gonna to have a huge amount of the flange exposed. So if you put this row on top, you're coming down just about to the bottom, which is correct. And if you put this row on top of here, you're gonna bury the entire flange and uh, it's gonna drain out possibly on this shingle, but probably inside the house. So we're gonna have two rows on top and the bottom of the flange exposed, which is the proper install method. Okay, so I got the center. I'm gonna measure. So if we cut six inches wide, we'll have um, a nice little drainage path down the side of the flange. So we're gonna measure uh, three inches off that center hole. And I think I already showed, but if you guys notice, it's a very narrow flange. Like there's two inches from the edge of the flange um, to where it starts to rise up. That is nothing. So we're definitely gonna put some sealant down this before we put the shingles down, because um, I don't trust that one bit. So what I'll do to um, uh, mark these shingles before we cut is just take the back of my, my hook blade and just score the shingles so it turns white so you can see where your three inch mark is. And then if you set your, set your flange beside your two marks, you, you can determine where the top of this is going to be. So it's gonna be just above this row of shingles And we're gonna cut this, these ones straight down. The angle starts just above. So if you're good at art or drawing or anything, it's just doing a, a little semicircle. Um, one way you can do it if you're not, not certain, is take the back of your knife and score the whole semicircle. Gives you a really rough shape to go by. Um, you'll be able to tell when you do that, if, if it's super lopsided or not square, so then just adjust off that. Um, kind of what I like to do, it takes a quick second. 
and now we're gonna cut it. Now we're gonna test fit the flange. Make sure to release the shingles um, <laughs> that are stuck so it actually goes up. All right, so flange fits, so uh, we remarked center, and now it's time um, to get that whole saw out. I'm up here, Mark! <laughs> Kenny said I can have his coffee. Okay. Oh, you're the man. Skipping ahead to the second flange because the cameraman was on break. We use a three and three quarter inch bi-metal hole saw to cut the roof deck. This gives room for the HVAC if any small adjustments need to be made. After you have the hole cut, please remove the battery from the drill before you clear the hole saw. I've seen somebody not do this and it does not end well for anybody. Now it's time to fasten the flange to the roof. We have the hole cut, flange set in place, our first two fasteners will be on the bottom edge with gasketed screws. I didn't have my quarter inch bit on me, and as you can see, I just rounded out my bit holder. Next is just to use the chuck of the drill, which works surprisingly well. Not recommended, but will work in a pinch. After the first two fasteners are in, I will look and see if I need to trim the shingles one last time. Trying out my new stiletto hatchet magnetic nail holder. It works surprisingly well. Review of this hammer coming soon. Make sure to keep those nails on the outside edge of the flange. As discussed earlier, we will apply Melco sealant between the flange and the shingles. This will create a gasket and stop any moisture from finding its way in. I also always caulk any shingles I released being wintertime in Ontario, these will never reseal on their own.